Welcome viewer, explorers of the past and seekers of untold stories, to History Unrevealed. One of the most renowned and commended specialists ever, the Renaissance virtuoso Michelangelo, is a verifiable and social Goliath. The man poses a potential threat over the workmanship world right up till now. Be that as it may, what was the man himself as a matter of fact? Like, was there anything eminent about him? In addition to his artistic talent, scientists have decided to gain proficiency with the solution to these inquiries, and they've revealed a couple of shocks. Unobtrusive subtleties spotted on Michelangelo's shoes might modify his standing. The forensic anthropologists in question were members of Italy's Forensic Anthropology, Paleopathology, and Bioarchaeology Research Center, and the subjects of their research were rather unusual. Essentially, they put a huge amount of exertion into looking at shoes suspected to have once had a place with Michelangelo. For any of us not engaged with the exploration that could appear to be somewhat abnormal. The thing is, however, in the possession of specialists who understand what they're doing shoes can very uncover. A ton of data can be extricated from an individual's footwear and not simply corresponding to their style inclinations. With just enough consideration and exertion, more substantial attributes can likewise be reasoned. A large portion of us have known about Michelangelo since we were kids. People today have at least a hazy idea of who the man was because his incredible legacy has endured throughout the centuries. This as of late distributed study, however, may very well test our biases about him. The man of Michelangelo's sculpture will in general stick in our brains in any event, taking on a semi-legendary quality. However, the human side of the now legendary figure has been revealed by this study. Regardless of all his ability and the sheer force of his work, he likely wasn't exactly so massive in each office. Michelangelo showed up into the world in 1475. Brought into the world in a spot called Capris in Italy, his father filled in as a judge in this little local area. However, the family would before long be moving. They gave in and moved to Florence where Michelangelo was still a young child. Early in his life, tragedy struck Michelangelo. His mother was in poor health, and she died when the boy was just six years old. This interruption to his life implied the youthful Michelangelo's invested a great deal of energy being taken care of by another family. These carers acquainted him with stone cutting, which clearly served him well. In later life, Michelangelo fostered a reasonable interest in human expression since early on. Instead of concentrating on other aspects of his education, the boy would look at artists working in nearby churches and try to copy their sketches to improve his own skills. In the long run, he got to know the laid-out specialists, Dominic Monster Landale. It had become obvious to Michelangelo's father that his imaginatively disapproved of child won't follow him into the universe of money. So when the kid was 13, he permitted him to become Gerlandayo, his understudy. It was under this craftsman's tutelage then that Michelangelo took in the fresco strategy for painting paintings. Michelangelo's monstrous ability was rapidly clear to Garlando, who prescribed that he appropriately figure out how to cut workmanship from stone. The youngster was shipped off the castle of Lorenzo Domenici, who administered over Florence at that point. The budding artist learned about classical sculpture on the grounds of this most extravagant and grandiose setting. Normally being in this generally first class of conditions demonstrated valuable for making contacts. During this period, Michelangelo was shown by an unmistakable stone worker by the name of Bertoldo de Giovanni. However, that wasn't all. During this time, he met distinguished and intelligent people from a wide range of fields including academics, scientists, and poets. As a genuine Renaissance man, Michelangelo had many strings to his bow. His inclinations were wide, and they frequently took care of into one another. For example, he fostered an interest for human science and was even allowed by the Catholic Church to direct analyzations on human remaining parts. This experience, however grim, without a doubt straightforwardly affected his specialty. The vivid and realistic details of his human subjects are one of the style's defining features. 
For instance, the manner in which he depicts muscularity is particularly impressive. This could be found in his initial functions as a young person, for example, skirmish of the centaurs and Madonna situated on a stage. There were violent times in Florence in 1492. Michelangelo moved to Bologna following the death of Lorenzo Domenici. He continued his education here for a while before moving back to Florence, when things were more peaceful. Presently, however, he was functioning as an expert stone carver following quite a while of learning his specialty. Subsequent to putting in a couple of additional years in Florence, Michelangelo then migrated to Rome. Here he was dispatched by a conspicuous cardinal to make a model portraying a departed Jesus spread out on his mom Mary's lap. The piano would be the name given to the finished product. Incredibly, the piano required the 25-year-old craftsman under a year to finish. Indeed, even around then, individuals clearly perceived the virtuoso of Michelangelo's work. Furthermore, obviously, that stays the case today. The model has since been rehoused a few times, yet it tends to be seen today in Vatican City, an independent city-state situated inside the actual limits of Rome, Italy. The piano has a unique qualification in that it's the main Michelangelo piece to have his name carved into it. The story goes that he chose to do this when he heard somebody asserting that another craftsman was capable. Irritated by the prospect of another person getting credit for his endeavors, he cut out his name on Mary's quip. From 1501 on, Michelangelo worked on what would become one of his masterpieces for three years. Two previous sculptors had attempted to complete the statue of David, but neither was successful. Michelangelo then, at that point, dominated and transformed the block of marble into what has since become quite possibly of the most notable model on the planet. A master sculptor created the statue of David, but Michelangelo's next masterpiece would also demonstrate his talent as a painter. He accepted the Pope's challenge to decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. This undertaking plainly caught Michelangelo's creative mind, and his vision turned out to be progressively far-reaching as he advanced. Because he was dissatisfied with the quality of the work that his assistants were producing, Michelangelo fired them all right away. He worked tirelessly on the project alone, spending an incredible amount of time painting the ceiling while lying on his back. One of the greatest pieces of Renaissance art remains the result, which he displayed on Halloween in 1512. Dealing with the Sistine Sanctuary had removed a ton from Michelangelo truly, and his advantage before long turned somewhere else. Of course, he continued to paint and sculpt, but architecture became his primary interest. In this industry, similarly as with all the others, he showed his virtuoso. He planned a few mind-blowing structures. However, his most prominent commitment to the field presumably came during his residency as head planner of Street Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. Michelangelo came to a mature age, dying half a month prior to he turned 89, abandoning an unimaginable heritage and a colossal group of work. He was promptly proclaimed as an expert craftsman, and this standing hasn't developed reduced in the hundreds of years that have followed his passing and 1564. It's a blessing that so many of Michelangelo's works are still on display, allowing us to marvel at his genius. We as a whole have some familiarity with his standout capacities as a craftsman, however what might be said about his overall character and his actual qualities. For specific admirers of his work, Concerning his personality, these are pressing inquiries. Most importantly, it appears to be that Michelangelo had been something of a troublemaker. It said that he had a sharp attitude, which put a burden on his own and proficient connections. Michelangelo was also known to experience periods of depression, as can be seen in his own writings. His obsession with perfectionism appears to have made him a difficult taskmaster. For instance, he noted as far as Michelangelo's actual qualities, we likewise know some things. Questions connected with Michelangelo's rawness have kept on fascinating individuals even such an extremely long time after his passing. This report has almost certainly provided us with new information regarding the great artist. As was mentioned earlier, the study was a little odd because it focused on the careful analysis of three shoes that had been recovered from Michelangelo's home after his death. 
Two of the shoes were identical, while the third was unique. Since no other study had attempted to use Michelangelo's clothing in this manner, experts had to make do with the one. This was a novel study. However, the researchers believed they could accurately estimate his height by measuring the shoes. Indeed, it just so happens, this man with a gigantic heritage was most likely very short concerning actual height. The specialists gauge that Michelangelo was no taller than 5'2", which is significantly more limited than most European men today. That could appear to go against that a considerable lot of us have the extraordinary man. Regarding his art, Michelangelo, indeed, was certainly not an especially diminutive man by the principles of his time. The typical level of Europeans in the 15th and 16th hundreds of years was more limited than it is today. Giorgio Vasari, an artist and writer from Michelangelo's time, once wrote a description of the great man. He said that he was of average height, with shoulders raised, but his body was well balanced. Because Vasari used the term mediocre in its earlier sense to mean average, this use of the word wasn't nearly as insulting as it might have appeared. Therefore, it really wouldn't be that far-fetched to suggest that Michelangelo stood just over five feet tall. The three shoes that were considered are identical in size, and that implies they probably have a place with a similar person. Therefore, we are unsure whether this study is referring to Michelangelo's height. What's more, that makes this study extraordinary, as subtleties like this are truly hard to get. To sort out truly unambiguous insights concerning Michelangelo's actual attributes, analysts would need to accomplish something very extreme. On the off chance that we preclude the exhumation of Michelangelo's remaining parts, which we should that leaves concentrates on like this one, including his shoes. Even though it is a little odd, we can say that this method of research actually presents far fewer challenges in this context. Following on from the shoe study, scientists have more intends to find out about Michelangelo by concentrating on fingerprints remembered to be his some of his works bare fingerprints, with one as of late found on a waxwork called the slave, whenever shown to be his such fingerprints could uncover more about the craftsman. All of this could appear to be a tremendous measure of work to find out around one man. However, if nothing else, it simply showcases what an impact Michelangelo has had on craftsmanship and culture. Because he was such a significant figure, there are people willing to spend their entire lives meticulously examining his shoes and fingerprints. The power and enduring impact of his work has without a doubt made him a transcending figure of the craftsmanship world. As we reach the final frames of today's video, we want to extend our heartful thanks to each and every one of you for joining us on this adventure. Your time and attention are truly appreciated. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to show some love by liking, commenting, and subscribing. We're immensely grateful for your support. Until our next rendezvous, Keep exploring, stay curious, and most importantly, thank you for watching.